So we'll get straight into it here with the price forecast tools shall we have here on BitcoinMagazinePro.com. Now, all this is doing is trying to provide a number of different on-chain fundamental network-derived data points to try and forecast some upside price targets for Bitcoin, as well as potential flaws for bear cycle lows as well. Just quickly as an introduction, if this does seem a little confusing, because there's a lot of formulas, calculations, and numbers we'll be going over today, at any point, you can just go to this chat on BitcoinMagazinePro.com. It's 100% free. Scroll down and you'll see all the formulas and calculations there. But what we'll do is go through them one one by one to give you a little bit of an insight onto exactly how this works, whether you maybe are experienced with this chart already and need a little bit of a refresh into its calculations, or if it's something that you're seeing for the very first time. But what we can see if we just isolate to look at the cumulative value days destroyed, for example, this green line here, we can see this has historically called the Bitcoin price cycle lows practically to perfection within every single cycle. Now, what we can do to actually figure out how this is being calculated to see if it's worthy of being included in your own investing and analysis is if we just scroll down, what we can see is this coin value days destroyed here, this cumulative value days destroyed, sorry, I should say, is formulated using the coin days destroyed. So what is the coin days destroyed? If, for example, I held one BTC for 100 days before transferring it, then I would add 100 coin days destroyed to the network. Now to add the same 100 coin days destroyed to the network with only 0.1 Bitcoin, then I'd actually have to hold it for a thousand days. So what this does is it weights the transfers of coins, weights the movement of underlying real spot Bitcoin by the amount of time it's been held. So when we have these huge spikes to the upside, indicates that not just a large amount of Bitcoin is being transferred, but it's being transferred by some of the network's most experienced long-term holders. So what we can do once we have this coin days destroyed is look at the cumulative sum of this value time destruction, as we can see here. So the way that we do this is looking at the USD valuation at the time it was actually transferred rather than just looking at the coin days destroyed element of that. And what we can do is once we have that, multiply it by 6 million, which granted is a little bit of an arbitrary number like it states here. But what we can see is if we just zoom out, this has been one of, if not the most accurate tools for calling the Bitcoin price flaws. We can see throughout it, the entire history of Bitcoin, I really can't overstate how accurate this has been, almost to the dollar, this has marked the Bitcoin price flaw all the way back here in 2011, all the way up to our most recent cycle here. Again, within just a few dollars, it marked the Bitcoin bear market lows. Now, this is currently set at around forty-five dollars to $46,000, but like I said, we'll actually come back to this a little bit later with this CSV data download. So what we'll look at next is the top cap delta top and eventually the terminal price, because a lot of these are actually quite intertwined, interlinked and based off quite similar data points. So it says here that we need the delta top, but actually to start this, we'll look at the top cap first. What we need to do is look at the all time average cap, which is the cumulative sum of market cap divided by the age of the market in days, which again might sound a little confusing, but it's essentially just an all time weighted moving average of the Bitcoin market cap. So if we just add every single day that Bitcoin has been around, the market cap of that cumulatively sum it and then divide it by the amount of time that Bitcoin's actually been in existence, the total elapsed days, this all time weighted moving average gives us this average cap. Now, once we have that, we just multiply it by 35 and this gives us the top cap. So again, if we just go up here, we can see that this top cap here is this blue line, which worked incredibly accurately until the previous cycle. And then this cycle as well, it looks like it might be a little bit off the mark, currently over $620,000. What we can do with that is actually take it a step further, like we like to do on this channel, to calculate the delta top. Now, this is using the realized cap. So if I just open up this MVRVZ score chart here, what this is looking at is the average accumulation price or cost basis of all Bitcoin on the network. So I'll just hide this Z score here and look at this blue line here, which is the realized cap. So we take into account every single Bitcoin that's ever been transferred, not just whole coins either, every single Satoshi, every single movement of any Bitcoin on the network. And we aggregate all of those transfers and then look at the USD valuation at that time of transfer to give us this cost basis of the network. This gives us the realized price, which would just be the realized cap divided by the circulating supply. Or as we can see on this chart, the realized cap, which is currently around $1.1 trillion. So pretty high. But if we look at the realized price itself, almost gives us a good level to be watching as well, not included in the price forecast tools to potentially accumulate. Once we're beneath this level, once the average investor throughout Bitcoin's entire history is currently holding at a loss, usually a good area to accumulate. 
But if we just go back to the price forecast tools here, what we can see is if we subtract the average cap, which is what we calculated previously, the all time weighted moving average essentially from this realized cap and then multiply this by seven, it gives us this delta top calculation, which again is one of these metrics which has been incredibly accurate historically. It was slightly off the mark in 2021 and it looks like it may be a little bit beyond reaching, at least in the short term in this cycle as well. But again, we can take this one step further. We look at the terminal price. What we can do is we just scroll down here. We can see the terminal price, again, taking into account this coin days destroyed, the metric that we first discussed, looking at this weighted transfer of Bitcoin on the network. What we can do is look at the transferred price, which is the sum of the coin days destroyed divided by the existing supply of Bitcoin, the amount of Bitcoin in circulation at that time. This gives us this transferred price. And then what we do is simply multiply that by 21. So again, seems slightly arbitrary this one, but given the fact that there'll only ever be 21 million Bitcoin in existence, it gives us this terminal value. So what we can see is if we just go up to the price action chart again here, we can see this has actually been one of the most historically accurate top calling price forecasting tools for Bitcoin. We can see even in the previous cycle, it marked this price action top almost to perfection. I mean, we did have a double top, so it kind of negated the accuracy to some extent. But regardless, if you were taking profit as Bitcoin had surpassed this terminal price in the previous cycle, as we were above $60,000, you'd have been pretty damn close. Now, again, kind of the point of this video is as we look to the current Bitcoin cycle, we're substantially beneath all of these top calling metrics for the Bitcoin price action. We can see this terminal price is currently at $288,000, which right now feels a million miles away. But we can't rule anything out. Maybe we are about to see this supply shock, this supply squeeze of just not even nearly enough Bitcoin to go around for all of the institutions, for all of the high net worth individuals trying to accumulate and Bitcoin's limited circulating supply. Maybe that's finally going to come into fruition at some point and we'll reach this terminal price once again. And finally, what well, we can see the balance price here, another bottom calling metric is looking again to try and accurately predict the Bitcoin bear market lows. And what we do is just subtract the transferred price from the realized price. So this transferred price, which we took from the terminal price, which is the coin days destroyed divided by the existing supply of Bitcoin. A lot of maths in this video, a lot of calculations. As I said, if at any point you didn't feel like I sufficiently explained anything, go onto the chart here, go to Bitcoin Magazine Pro. This is an entirely free chart and data point. Then you can look at all of these formulas, calculations to do this yourself. But once we subtract the transfer price from that realized price, this average accumulation price, we can see that this gives us the balanced price, which again, has been incredibly accurate historically at predicting these Bitcoin bear market lows. And especially if we add on the coin value days destroyed, we can see that in unison, especially when these converge, it gives us incredibly accurate signals, the tail end of where the Bitcoin price could drop to. And like I said, we're gonna take this one step further. So with the price forecast tools, what we can do is aggregate all of these to create a new metric, a new chart, which is the Bitcoin cycle master, which does differ slightly from the price forecast tools. Like I said, it's aggregating and combining all of these on-chain data points to give us some confluence, to give us some points where we can more accurately define what Bitcoin's fair valuation could be and when it may be aggressively valued, overvalued at cycle lows or at undervalued levels. So just for example, if I zoom in over the past two cycles, we can see that when Bitcoin is above this fair valuation, it's when the Bitcoin bull market has historically really kicked off, really gotten into this exponential period of price action. Once we're beneath this, it almost acts as a bear market signaler. Once we're beneath this, good area to be a little bit more defensive in your positions, potentially be accumulating a little bit more aggressively. And once we're above it, maybe time to start taking some profit, cutting those positions, or at least scaling back on your dollar cost averaging in to save some money for some slightly lower prices so you can accumulate a little bit more discounted Bitcoin. But if we just look at the cycle lows here, we can see once we get close to these green valuation levels based on the price forecast tools that we looked at previously, it's just been an incredibly accurate signal. And once we had all of these, these actually almost act as dynamic levels of support and resistance. We can see just looking at this cycle so far, we bounced on multiple occasions from this undervalued level and it was resistance during the bear market as well. And once we'd claimed this fair valuation price for Bitcoin, we could see we bounced off of this level on multiple occasions while continuing to match new or high, new all time highs. 
and we faced resistance very close to this aggressively valued price. So you could almost turn this metric into an oscillator if you're a site subscriber using the CSV data download or our API access up here. And at that point, if you use this as an oscillator, it could potentially give you an idea of where Bitcoin could be in the cycle. But as I said, we're going to take this one step further. If we look at the coin value days destroyed, the CVDD and the terminal price, which have historically been the two most accurate metrics and levels and forecasting tools for the Bitcoin price section, what I've done is CSV data download this and just put it into a Google sheet. So I'm just going to move myself over here so that we can see it a little bit clearer. All we can do is with a site subscription, you gain access to all of the raw data, formulations, etc., for a vast majority of the charts that we actually have on site. So if we look at this price forecast tools, again, it's going to be a lot of numbers here, but we can see if we just scroll all the way down, the cumulative value of days destroyed is currently sitting, if we continue scrolling down, at around $45,000. Again, providing some confluence with this balance price at around $45,000, $46,000, but trending to the upside. And the terminal price as well, as I said, as I filmed this, $288,000. But what I'm going to do is take the slope, the gradient of these lines, which are moving at a somewhat predictable rate. We can see over the past quarter, especially the past 90 days, these have been moving up in, I don't want to say a straight line, but a very predictable rate of change. So what we could almost do is take these two levels, take that historic slope, that change in trend, and extrapolate that and project it going forward. So what I did is using the CSV data download, again, if I just scroll down, what I did using the CVDD, cumulative value days destroyed and terminal price, is I mapped them forward. So again, I might need to change my position once again over to this side. So what we can see on this chart is these two lines extrapolated and projected towards the end of 2026. Now in doing so, what we could potentially see is a Bitcoin bear cycle low if we had to see a more bearish 2026, or if the four year cycle thesis is broken, we're about to see huge liquidity injections into the market and we're about to see risk and speculative assets absolutely skyrocket to the upside. We could see if we had to see a bullish 2026, how high the price could go based on the current trend of the terminal price. Now, as I said, this is based on the current data. This is not exactly how it's going to play out. These data points are changing every single day. We're just taking an average and extrapolating that going forward. It's much better to react to the data than try and predict it this far in advance, but that's not as fun. So what we could see is projecting the CVDD. This is currently around $82,000, $83,000 as a projected price for December 31st, 2026. That could be a good bear market low price, especially considering we've actually been lower than that in our most recent downwards move as I filmed this, then I think anywhere beneath $80,000 is pretty good value for money. It's pretty good discounted prices for Bitcoin. And this terminal price up here would have actually surpassed by the time we reach 2027 around $519,000, nearly 520k over half a million dollars, which as I said, may be optimistic, but maybe we are on the verge of a supply squeeze, huge liquidity injections, and a little bit more of a realization from the masses of Bitcoin's true potential. So just to summarize, the Bitcoin price forecast tools chart has historically been one of the most accurate metrics for predicting Bitcoin market cycle peaks and bottoms, and especially considering it's formulated using a number of fundamental and network usage derived data points, rather than just psychological levels, traditional TA points, which maybe are a little bit more applicable to traditional markets, equities and commodities. Bitcoin's unique in the fact that we can see all of this data on chain. We can see the real time supply and demand economics dynamically evolving and adapting. So it seems uh, crazy to not utilize this data. And of course, they could do with some tweaks potentially, especially those upside models. So what we're going to do with Bitcoin Magazine Pro is continue to evolve and adapt these levels to ensure they remain incredibly accurate and reliable going forward. But especially when we take these price forecast tools in their raw format and formulate new charts using that, such as the Bitcoin Cycle Master, it gives us potentially a simpler and maybe even more accurate understanding of the current fair valuations of Bitcoin, and as well as that where we may be in the cycle if we're above that going towards those overly or aggressively valued points, or maybe towards a bear cycle or if we're that uh, undervalued, sorry, or even at the cycle lows level that we could see has been historically accurate. But 
As we like to do on this channel, if we take it one step further, extrapolate this data to predict the future prices based on an incredibly bullish or a little bit more of a bearish 2026, then we could maybe have a floor price for the end of year 2026 of around $80,000. I'm, I'm running out of space on this chart, but as well as that, an upper price tag of maybe around $500 to $520,000. So hopefully you enjoyed this content, a little bit of a refresher on the price forecast tools if you've used it before, or maybe a nice introduction if it's it seemed a little bit daunting and it was just something you wanted to try and understand a little bit better before utilizing it yourself. So if you did like this content, please let me know in the comments below and on social media. I look forward to reading and replying to them. And as always, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.